Hey, hey, we're doing another story chat. What's going on? Happy Monday. Good evening to everybody. I'm Sergio, and we're gonna be talking about story as we usually do. So I uh, got a couple announcements and some really exciting stuff coming up, which should be really fun for not only August, but also September. So uh, there's some good networking opportunities and just learning opportunities in general. So I think that's, that's gonna be something really important that we wanna be uh, keen into for August and September. September is gonna be a great month, I think. Just, um, you know, event-wise, which is the Lightbox, Ex Lightbox Expo, which is coming up. Talk a little bit about that in a second. And then a lot of the stuff that we're doing with uh, storyboard art. So um, let me get that out of the way first. And then I wanna talk about questions and get some updates from people, like what's going on? How are we doing with, um, with finding jobs, with networking, with getting our portfolio up to speed. I wanna hear all about that because that is gonna be really important coming up, right? That's, that's the fun stuff, okay. Big shout out to everybody. Good to see some familiar faces on here. Uh, we're beaming to you live from Facebook and Instagram and we post these little chats that we do with some really awesome tidbits of information and it's, it's not me uh, all the time. I mean, we get, yeah, I'm kind of leading the, the, the conversation here, right? <laughs> but we get some really great comments from people on all of our feeds, uh, just talking story, tips, um, you know, resources, you know, film suggestions, stuff like that is, is really, really good for all of us to, to participate in and learn. Um, so let me get to the Lightbox Expo stuff that's coming up. I, hopefully you guys have heard about that event. If you haven't, go to lightboxexpo.com, I believe is the website, and you're gonna see information about that there. That is a, uh, it's usually an in-person event. Of course, we've got the whole corona crisis, so we're not doing in-person events this year. Uh, everything's been canceled, right? Sporting events, in-person events, that's fine. We're gonna do this online, okay? <laughs> They, the organizers of this event have now moved this online, which is gonna be actually a really interesting and I think beneficial thing for many of us who could not have gone to the event in Pasadena. We were there last year, which was a fabulous event, just really well organized, well attended, inspiring. There was amazing talks. It was packed. There was just the excitement was there. And we're gonna bring all of that online. And especially for us with Storyboard Art, we're doing our own events that we, uh, in conjunction with what Lightbox Expo is doing. So we had um, we had a meeting that was uh, initiated by the Lightbox organizers uh, last week, and we're ramping up to this event, it's gonna be great. So we're one of the contributing sponsors to that event. We do that because we wanna meet everybody. <laughs> we wanna participate in stuff like this. This is why, why we do it. You know, me on a selfish reason is I get to meet artists and network on my own, right? And then also, um, we meet a bunch of people who are trying to get into this business and they're trying to learn about storytelling, about uh, filmmaking, about just bettering their art and their drawings. I met a, a really inspiring 16 year old girl uh, last year and who showed me a portfolio. It was really amazing to see that level of, of passion and also just quality level of skills the skill set that she was doing at, at 16 years old and she already knew what she wanted to do and get into storyboards and that to me is really exciting her mom was there is really supportive of, of all of that so I think that's a wonderful trend that the parents get involved and uh, and show off that you know support their kids passion if they really like movies and they really like to draw they really like art um, just like me when I was a kid I, I loved that stuff and I, I went off and I pursued it because I was just headstrong and and just stubborn and I, I had to do it so, you know, but this young, this young girl, she was into it and, and wanted to do it with her parents' support, which is great. That's, that's really good to see because, you know, the, the, the natural thing that happens is like parents get scared of, of, of an industry or maybe something they, they're not familiar with, right? The, the famous ones like medicine or architecture and engineering and all that stuff, that's like, oh, that's the good thing you want to get into, right? Well, what about art, okay? <laughs> What's more expensive, a Rembrandt or a, a skyscraper? Huh? What's more expensive? <laughs> Rembrandts have sold for $350 million. There are skyscrapers that sell for less than that. Okay? <laughs> One painting. All right? So I'm just saying. <laughs> At any rate, 
there is you're not going to be a starving artist it's it's really there is opportunity now more than ever for uh people like us who who want to do creative things so that's that's always good all right getting back to what we're talking about with like bucket x but what are we going to do there we're sponsoring a bunch of things we're, we're having talks and we're organizing that now and getting some some really cool guys professionals out there to talk about the the business talk about what's going on now maybe the trends going forward all that's going to be covered okay on another side, I'm going to be doing some live streams too. I'm going to do a bunch of demos. And then we're also going to be sponsoring for those of you guys. And I want to know, is your portfolio ready? How many of there, of you out there have their portfolio ready to go? Is it something that you say, oh, yeah, I can, I can show this right now. Is this, you know, I, can, I can send you a link. You can, you know, can, you, can you do something that is, um, you know, send, send me an email, post it to a website. Is it ready to go? You know, I want to, I want to see if that is... Uh, is that the truth? Or some people, you know, they might, oh, well, I need to add a couple of drawings. There's a couple of holes in my portfolio. I'm not covering comedy scenes like I should be doing. I don't, I don't have uh, really strong compositions in my portfolio. Yeah. So you want to check that. <laughs> Make sure they're, you know, especially if, if you're applying to a specific job or you want to get into a certain industry, there's a lot of action shows going on. So do you have action scenes? Do you have really good, well constructed staging and camera work in your portfolio? You got to be able to see that. Is your perspective solid? So if don't fret if you don't have that. What we're going to be doing is um, is going over some of those things for you so that you know what to do. And we're sponsoring a drawing a portfolio challenge so you guys can draw and also enhance your portfolio. That's coming up towards the end of August, uh, beginning of September. We're locking down the dates for that. And that'll come out soon. Um, yeah, I love it. So Chad is ready here, but he could always be more ready. It's good. You just got to have something. You have something to show, okay? And so don't freak out if it's like, you know, you think it's not your best work. Sometimes, you know, we can be a little bit too hard on ourselves and we, we just get so critical with what we're doing that we lose we lose sight of the bigger picture. That's where it's sometimes good to have a, a trusted friend uh, in the industry, an artist friend maybe that comes up and uh, and can tell you, hey, you know, these are actually pretty good. You know, you should, you know, maybe change this around. This one's really strong, you know, put that to the front. You know, that's where you need a mentor, you know, a trusted friend or mentor, somebody who could guide you. Well, come to us. That's what we're here for. OK, <laughs> speaking of mentors, that's something I've been doing for many years. In fact, uh, I was doing it professionally inside the studios because other people had mentored me as I was coming up. And I really uh, just personally get get something out of of guiding along, you know, the younger guys that come in. And I've seen many, many artists that are now just such strong veterans that uh, that really know how to handle things. And you know, I feel like I had a little bit of a of a, a part in their growth as artists. And that's always exciting for me to see that. Okay, because you know that's the way I learned is other people taught me. Everything I know is because somebody else has taught it to me. You know, there's nothing I came. There's nothing brilliant that I came up with, right? I think what I'm good at, my my superpower, let's say, is one paying attention. And, and compiling from different resources, uh, you know, a method that I can use, you know, figuring it out, kind of deciphering it. That's that's what I'm. I think I'm pretty good at. And then I'm because I could I could do that on my own to figure out. Hey, I need to have know how to do this. I'm able to put that into some kind of a a package that I can show other people a method how to do it. Right. That doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. it doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. It's just a way that I know how to figure out something and. I could probably point you in the right direction, a couple shortcuts so you don't hit walls and barriers and, you know, drawing shortcuts and, and things that are that are really important to you to understand so that you don't get frustrated and it doesn't take longer than it should. You know, things like that. I've, I've been there, done that. I've, I've hit those walls. I've had those errors and mistakes. So I know what to do. The pitfalls, I can show you how to avoid those. <laughs> OK, that's where the mentoring uh, stuff comes in. And then another really good surprise that we're gonna we're gonna tell people about shortly is we have a a co-instructor that is gonna be with me on this mentorship. Another real seasoned pro and veteran that uh, I think you guys are gonna get a kick out of. Uh, you know, you, you've seen him before on some of our story our storyboard art um, events, but uh, we're gonna be tag teaming this mentorship, so you get a double mentorship <laughs> this time around. It's gonna be great. What's that? That's a course that uh, we've been talking about for a while, so I don't want to dig into it too much we can we can have a, a specific chat about that as the dates come closer because i think people are gonna have questions but it's basically a year-long course designed to really really boost your portfolio and get you into 
um, a, a place where you have confidence, where you, one, you need to know what, you know what you need to do to get out there in the workplace. And then you have all the tools that you need in order to be in the workplace. So you have strong drawing skills, you have uh, camera skills, you know about staging, you know what to do to break down a script. And then you know some of the business skills that you need to know, right? When working with contracts, dealing with pitches, stuff like that we cover, which is really, really fun. That's gonna be really great. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, getting back to some of these networking and learning opportunities uh, in, in conjunctions with, with what's happening at Lightbox. So we're one aspect of that. You're going to see on the Lightbox um, website when they publish the, the final schedule for the event, you're going to just see this just overload, in fact, of information, which is, which is great. So I really recommend for everybody out there, I think we have time on our hands, right? Most people are, have some downtime and it's, on the, it's starting on the weekend. So it's September 11th, 12th, and 13th. So that's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all day for those three days. Um, and just jam packed with all kinds of events, artists showing off work, uh, people selling exclusive uh, everything, artwork. Uh, you know, we're gonna have uh, some courses there free for people to, to participate in. Um, but you can get one of a kind things from people uh, out there in the in the artist community, and that might be a really great chance to connect with some of your you know some of your heroes out there that are working professionally today. Okay, and then some some legendary guys are going to be doing talks, uh, which is always great just to get inspired and learn from things. Right? Have you ever have you ever been around like? Uh, watching your DVDs and like your 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 movie extras on on streaming and stuff, those things you learn so much from the back, behind the scenes of insider uh, kind of tricks and and things that you may not have first realized how they did things that you're gonna get that from these talks. So that's that's really cool. Highly recommend you guys um, attend, and uh, it's worth it. There's a very minor small cost to it. I think you have to sign up and register. But it is so, so worth it. It's very accessible. And that is something that I think um, that I think we're all going to get something out of. I certainly do every single year. It's really, really inspiring. So, um, and, you know, not just Lightbox. There's other events like Comic-Con and WonderCon and uh, film festivals and CTN. So Cartoon Talent uh, Network, I believe that that's the abbreviation for that um, expo. So any kind of networking event is really good. I, I really do get inspired by everybody who's, who's doing something creative and is out there sharing their work. That's something that we can do. I, I did want to mention a couple of tricks that we can talk about when it comes to networking because that is something that we, we cover a lot. We talk about that. And I think one of the reasons why we, we might do it, you know, a lot, <laughs> do it to a, to a big degree, is because I think other people are not doing it as much as they should, right? I don't hear many people talk about rates in the industry. I don't hear many people talk about the business side of contracts and what to do and how to negotiate things, what to do when you actually get an interview. I don't, I don't hear many people or websites talking about that. So we want to be a resource to fill that hole because guess what? I didn't know anything about it either when I started out. And that's why I think it's important to talk about these things. Rates are, are such a funny topic because many people just don't know what to charge, right? And we had a recent post on our Instagram account, which uh, will point you to the Animation Guild, which publishes the artist rates. You can see a range of what you can, you can charge for a storyboard artist. And there's a, you know, there's a junior level, there's an apprentice level, there is a journeyman level, you know, all of these things are there. So depending on how much experience you have, what kind of job you're applying for, if it's episodic TV, if it's feature work, um, you know, live action film will also have different rates. But you need to have a range, especially if you, if you have no idea and you're going into this uh, maybe from another discipline. Maybe you're an animator who has some really good drawing skills and can put a portfolio together and, uh, and you can work into story because it's something you, you've always wanted to do. Well, if that's the case, well, then, you know, you need to know how to navigate that stuff because you're going to be at a loss. Maybe you apply for a job and you under you underbid yourself. OK, so that's, you know, maybe that's a win for the employer, but then you're going to be working really hard at a low rate. And I think what a win win situation is that you charge a fair rate and you also give real good value for the services that you provide. You make sure that you're doing the best possible job out there. And that what you turn in is actually worth more than what they're actually paying for you. You know, that, that they're actually paying you in a wage. And so you're happy. You get paid what you should, what, you, what you've actually asked for and negotiated. But then they're happy because you solved their story problem and you've done it to a really high level of quality. Guess what? 
They're gonna call you again <laughs> next time they have a project. They're gonna recommend you to a friend, right? The first thing is like somebody else says, hey man, I got this job, I, I need a story guy. And then this, you know, that person who hired you will say, well, I know a guy, you know, call this person, right? And they, they will, that happens all the time. I refer people all the time. I have a list of close contacts that, you know, if, if I can't do the job, I'll hand it off to my friends because I know they can do the work. I know they're reliable. I know they won't make me look bad if I give it to a client. That's what you want to be. That's where, that's the position you want to be so that you're, <laughs> you're, uh, you're solid, that you, you can build your network, right? So that's what it's all about, building your network and understanding what to do in the industry. That's, that's really important, okay? Um, drawing skills are also important. Technical stuff is also important. That's something we cover as well. But like I said, I think it's that technical part, you can do a search on YouTube and you find how many tutorials on what to do in Photoshop, right? What to do in Toon Boom and any of these programs. But putting all of this together is where I think it's really, um, really important. I got a, I got a really nice compliment the other day on, <laughs> on a book that I wrote with my uh, co-author Anson Ju. And uh, I should mention, mention Anson as well. He's, a, he's a, a real professional. He worked in Star Wars. This guy's been working on huge movies in Hollywood. And the information that he provided in that book, and he, he was the one to get me to come and, and help him co-author that, that book. And uh, I think we tag teamed it. He was just got so busy and we, we started doing it together. And um, and so that, that just learning from these guys is great. He interviewed a bunch of uh, professionals and that's in the book. But I got a compliment the other day of, of how, how we put together each one of these, uh, these pieces in like, like a list of ingredients. And I think I even wrote that in the book, which was, you know, it's like baking, right? You got to put in a ton of ingredients, you mix it all together, and then you get the final product. Because it's not just about drawing. It's not just about storytelling. There's a writing component. There's a film language component. There's a physical and technical component, which you have to master. But all of that stuff equals fun, okay? It equals storytelling, equals the passion that we have to create films, right? Now, some people are better at one thing versus the other, right? Spielberg is probably an amazing, or he is an amazing storyteller, right? Is he that good of a draftsman? Can he actually draw? I've seen some storyboards from him. I think they're, they're pretty good. You know, they're like thumbnail, chicken scratch uh, drawings. But he might not be as skilled as some other illustrators, let's say, but he can communicate the idea. Storytelling wise, that guy is off the charts, right? Uh, so now a story artist needs to understand all of these things. Now you might have good writers who are excellent at the written word, but can they draw, right? Maybe not. So uh, as a story artist, we should understand story structure. Maybe we're not as good as writing as some of these writers out there, but that we, uh, that we do have the knowledge to be able to put these things together, right? That, that's the important part about this. <laughs> cool. Um, well, anyway, let me get some, some of these comments and we'll talk something a little bit more about this to, to hit some of the, maybe the, the points that, you're, that you wanna hit when it comes to networking, pushing yourself forward and all that. Uh, yeah, I love, see we're, we're commenting already about the portfolio stuff on, on Facebook here. So Chad has a, has a great, comment here. So another thing about undervaluing, undervaluing yourself is that you could cost you a job as well. Sometimes they see your price and not be completely sold that you, that you'll pull the necessary effort into it because of the cost. That's true. I mean, nobody values something that they don't pay for, right? If you offer your services for free, they're going to think they're not worth anything, right? Think about that, right? What do you get for free? Do you really value it? If somebody's handing out like, I don't know, what, uh, you know, free ice cream on the street or something. You might have it, but you're not going to think, you know, you might enjoy it. But the next time you think of ice cream, you're going to think, oh, I want this, you know, this ultra fancy yogurt shop that I usually go to and not this free ice cream on the side of the road. Uh, <laughs> and the same thing goes with your artwork, right? If you're giving it away for free or, or low cost, they're going to think you're going to do it really cheaply. And you're not going to put the effort in. That's why you have to handle yourself like a pro, right? You gotta handle yourself like a professional. So this is why, this is why, um, you know, and I, I must say not to toot my own horn here, but when I, when I get a freelance job, when I, when I have a client, I like to service them as much as possible because it might be the first and maybe even sometimes the last time I'll work with them, but I want them to have a good impression of my work and to understand fully what to do with, uh, 
with a story artist. I, I had a, a job for a video game company doing some cinematics. And they told me straight out, they were honest, they said, I've never worked with a story artist before. I don't know what to do here. And then I was happy to handhold them through that. I said, well, let's talk about aspect ratios. What kind of aspect ratio are you gonna do for this video game? Is it gonna be horizontal 16 by nine? Are you gonna do something more cinematic for the actual cinematic cutscenes? which is gonna be a two, three, five kind of widescreen format. Are you gonna do something square on your, on your phone? Are you gonna do a vertical? Like what, what is it? And you know, maybe we should talk about the script. And so we go through all this process. So you make sure that they feel like they're dealing with somebody who's done this before, who can deliver on time, deliver it well, and is a total pro. And, you know, and that, does, that means you, know, you can tell a joke here and there, right? You wanna keep it lighthearted, but you don't wanna screw around, you, especially not on their time. They're paying you for that. So I, I, give, I try and give as much as possible value for my services so that they feel like they are getting, uh, yeah, they're getting their money's worth. <laughs> and you know, not every job goes smoothly. Oh man, I've been on jobs where it's like, whoo, you know, it's, it's like rough working with the art directors. It's rough dealing with the clients. Uh, you know, sometimes I turn in things that they don't like. You know, that's happened before. Oops, you know, what can I do? You know, I could just improve on that. I have to learn from those experiences. And I've learned over the years to, to, to be able to minimize those experiences. Some of the things that I do when I get in on a job, I ask a ton of questions. I ask them what kind of finish they're looking for. They want something really polished. Are they okay with quick sketches? Uh, because I can do those faster. Or do they want something that's really tight to show another client? Maybe they're doing a commercial for advertising or something and they need to, to prove something for somebody else. I remember we did, um, I got hired on last minute for this job uh, on the movie Jonah Hex, if you guys remember that film back in the day. <laughs> and they wanted really polished color boards and they wanted them quick. That was like a really quick turnaround. I think I did like a three, three day job over a bunch of nights and weekends to knock that one out. And I was just one of many artists on that. So they had to pitch, they had to redo a couple of scenes and do, do that to, to pitch it to the executives and they wanted really tight boards. So that's something you want to ask and make sure that you're, you're covering yourself that way, okay? Then the other thing is, are you working in a method that is going to give you the results within the time frame that you have at a really high quality, at a really high level? And that's where you want to have a handle on your tools. You got to know how to, how to use your digital tools. And sometimes you got to learn how to use and know how to use your traditional tools, which is like pen and paper, markers, pen and ink, because you might be in a conference room physical conference room when all this corona craziness dies down and you might have to be face to face with somebody and bust out some drawings right there. So don't be shy. Um, I'll admit my drawings that I do on a, on a rush like that when people are looking, I get nervous and they might turn out like crap. <laughs> but then, then you gotta go back, you clean it up, you know, no big deal. After a while, you know, I've learned my shortcuts here and there. Can, I, can, I can do a couple quick sketches which, which look pretty good. Um, other times they don't come out is they want me to draw something like I've never drawn before. Draw a rhinoceros on a boat, you know, in, in the jungle or some kind of underwater scene with like a, a squid or something crazy. Then, you know, I have to look for reference, but I'll do my best just, you know, on the spot there. And that's what you want to have. You want to be able to do your full bag of tricks. Certainly with a job, your digital tools, that's your, your go-to stuff. You should have your brushes ready to go in Photoshop. You should have your templates set up so that they're quick and easy. You can download that, email that to people. You know, have a Dropbox account ready to go so you can put that on there. You know, upload your stuff to Dropbox, send a link real quick. All that stuff is really accessible, low cost. You know, our 2D drawings, even at high, high, res, high resolution, HD resolution, or even 4K resolution is not that heavy. You can send these images nowadays really great really fast, you need a, a solid internet connection, okay? That's something that, that works. One of the things that saved my ass a bunch of times on the fly was Starbucks. <laughs> I used to hate on Starbucks, be like, ah, man, these corporate guys, they got all this coffee. And, and then one day I was like, I was in a pinch. I needed to send some files real quick. So I went into Starbucks and I grabbed a coffee and I sat down and they had fast internet. <laughs> that saved my ass. That's why I don't, uh, I don't talk bad about Starbucks anymore. They give a good coffee at a decent price and they have a clean bathroom most of the time and they got really strong internet. So hopefully that continues after all this corona craziness dies down, okay? <laughs> now there might be other coffee shops that do just as good, right? Now, I love, I love a nice, custom, delicious, you know, hipster coffee every once in a while too, 
But hey, when when you got to go <laughs> with the basics, <laughs> that's what you need. Anyway, so um, those are all the tools that you should be doing that are important to, to cover. Okay. We got a great question here from Joseph. Let's answer this one. Joseph Garcia is asking, is there something wrong with working for free with productions that are starting out or working to sell to a network or building client relationships? That is a wonderful question. That's called spec work, right? That's working on, on spec. And in general, I advise you not to take any spec work. Do not work for free. Now, let me explain that a little bit. Free means working for nothing in exchange, okay? Don't do that. Don't get a job like that when they offer you nothing in exchange. And what you should do is you should counter offer. Uh, if they say, well, I got no money, there's no budget, I just need you on board, you're going to be part of the team, and we're going to pitch this to Netflix. After we get a green light, then we can pay you. That's when things start up, but we need these initial boards. I've heard that speech how many hundreds of times? And fortunately now I just turn them straight out to say no. Um, but there are other ways to get something in return. So think hard about where this, you know, who's involved with a production and what you can get out of it, okay? So if you need that extra kick to, you know, a script that maybe that you're really into and that you can use these boards for your own portfolio, you could show them and, and publish them on your, on your social media, that's something you can negotiate. You could say, well, I'll do these for a low cost or free, but I need to have rights to publish this, the images that I create. I need to be able to publish this in my portfolio in exchange for doing this at a low cost, okay? That's another thing I recommend. If you're gonna do that for production, I recommend you do it, not for free, but you do it for a low or reduced cost. So let's say your rate is $50 an hour. I'm just throwing out a number, okay? You might give them a half rate discount. So I'll give you 50% off my rate, okay? But you have to give me something in return. Um, I mean, you, you know, I'm just making things up here. You want to be diplomatic about how you negotiate these things. But you say in return, maybe what I can do is I can publish this on my website or you allow me to um, uh, to reuse these images for something else. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can make those images out of a T-shirt, whatever. Um, now, that's also uh, something that, you know, they might say, say no because of, you know, copyrights and things that they're, they're doing for their production. But I, I just, I don't like the idea of you giving away your services. Because again, they don't have value if you give away something for free. So even if they're paying a dollar, I think it's more important that they actually, they physically write a check, they have to go onto PayPal or whatever it is to pay you. And they just, they have to go through the effort because you should value your services and you should value your, your time uh, no matter what you do, okay? Uh, the other thing you need always is a contract. And I don't care uh, how cheap or how fast the job is, you get a contract in writing first, okay? That's what you need. A contract can be an email conversation. That is something that will hold up in court in the United States, okay? Um, that's a real pain in the ass if you have to go to court. Uh, so I try to avoid all that stuff beforehand with a contract that's in the right format and the right way to do it. The other thing I do is payment up front. That's something if you're working with a new client, you require them to pay you up front. If you go to a mechanic or a dentist or um, any other kind of service provider, try going to a lawyer and asking them to give you their services for free or for low cost first without doing anything. The lawyer's gonna laugh you outside the door. <laughs> and in fact, you should, you, should, you, should, uh, you should structure your payment like a lawyer would do, which is they ask for a retainer. That's one thing that you can do first. So if, they, if they're gonna book you out for a month, you might wanna ask them for five or $10,000 as a retainer for that particular job, if depending on how much work it is and what kind of job it is, first. And you don't lift a finger and you don't do anything without that check in the bank. You know, with the money in the bank, things are signed and you're ready to go. Now, some studios might say, well, that's, you know, that's, that's too much. We can't do that. You know, the legal department doesn't approve it. Um, so then what you can do is you can ask for payments in, uh, in pieces. So you can do a little bit up front you know, maybe a third of the total project job up front, a third at one of the deliveries, and a third of the money at the final delivery. And essentially you get paid in, in pieces like that, but you ensure that upon turning in your final work and your artwork, uh, uh, you get the final delivery. The other thing that you can do is negotiate in your contract that they, if they don't complete the payment for you in full, then you own the images and it's your 
right to publish or do whatever thing, anything you want with those images. That's something you can use to negotiate and make sure that they, you get paid, okay? <laughs> because they don't want these things going out on social media for a project that's supposed to be hush-hush. Well then, if they don't pay you, you can do whatever you want, okay? So make sure that's something that you can write into your contract. That's something you want to negotiate. All this should be on good terms, right? So anyway, that's something you should do there, okay? Um, anyway, those are a couple tips. Hopefully that, uh, that makes sense, right? That's something you can use and and help out with it. Uh, let me let me see if I can think of a couple of other things that would help you in those like internship, low cost, free kind of situations. If you're just starting out, one thing that you want to think about is gaining experience, but doing it in a smart way. So if you take an internship, most internships now are paid. They're required to just by law. You can't you can't have people work for free in the United States. There's just like you know, there's labor laws and stuff. So they, they might pay you minimum wage. That's okay. Minimum wage is fine. Um, if you're willing to accept that, if you're just starting out, but at least you got paid something, okay? The other thing to think about, in the United States, we have a pretty strong uh, work ethic, which means that there are also checks and balances here, uh, which means there are, you know, court system that, that still work sometimes. Well, let's hope they still work, but that uh, that's usually pretty strong, at least in business court. Then the other thing is like um, the, the, the laws and just the, the, the fear of getting sued is, is just a real pain to have to go to litigation. So people do things on the up and up. They're not out there to screw you for the most part. That doesn't mean you can't, that doesn't mean you shouldn't protect yourself. But on the whole, you, especially with bigger clients, you're talking like Sony, Activision, Disney, you know, Pixar, Lucasfilm, all these giant companies will do things on the up and up, they will they will make sure to have contracts and and you know you might not be able to negotiate very much with these big companies because they have to go through legal departments and all that stuff. It just depends on the kind of job you're doing, but that, at least you'll know you're you're probably going to get paid because those people they just don't want to avoid. They, I'm sorry, they don't want to have a litigation. They want to avoid any anything like that. Even a big company, it's just a real like. It's just a real waste of time. So they prefer to write you a check and you're, you know, your chump change, even like we're talking multiple thousands of dollars, even if you have a $10,000 job, that's probably chump change to a company like Disney, okay? They can write those things off like no, no big deal. That doesn't mean the people inside the company want to lose that money. Just like everybody else, you want to get the most value for your, for your services, whoever you hire. They're not there to blow money like the government. They want things done right, <laughs> okay? So what you should be doing is... Uh, making sure that uh, your contract is in place, but also have the peace of mind that there should be there is some recourse. Now, yes, I've been screwed. I have people who have stiffed me for money. Uh, you know, there's probably thousands of dollars in outstanding payments that I need to be collecting. But you know, I also, uh, you know, I pick my battles where I can win, right? And and that also, you know, time and stuff. Fortunately, like I said, most of that stuff is behind me. Like I. I've set things up in a way where I'm not, I usually don't get myself into a bind, but you never know. Again, you know, life has a way of throwing you some curveballs sometimes. Certainly with the whole coronavirus stuff is like productions m might be hesitant to hire people right now, or they might cancel a project all of a sudden. I know, you know, I know stories at Pixar where they hired a bunch of crew to finish up the good dinosaur movie. And within a month they had to fire all of the new contractors they hired. And these guys had transferred jobs. They had done all kinds of, they had moved mountains to get these people there to really ramp up and do the, do the job. And all of a sudden, boom, they, they changed the deadlines and these guys were out of work. Now, Pixar, uh, you know, w was smart about it. They made up for it. I think everybody that I heard about who had that situation happen to them, they got paid a severance and they got paid, um, you know, some kind of, some cushion fee essentially for, for that cut, which was, you know, something that Pixar n did not necessarily have to do. Uh, I don't think that was in the contract, but you know, out of goodwill, I think, or out of smart, you know, business practices, they were able to do that. In fact, I know personally some some of those people who who got cut at that point got rehired back later, because good people are hard to find, and as soon as you find these people, you want to keep them close. So, uh, so that's just something to think about that you can have that comfort. Now, overseas stuff, I should just want to mention this. And then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up a little bit for, for now, but I want to mention like overseas uh, negotiations and dealing with companies that, let's say you're in the United States and a foreign company comes and tries to solicit you for things. There you want, you want to make sure that you do your research and you know who you're dealing with and also um, 
uh, yeah, also have contracts and also make sure you get payment up front. That's the one biggest sign, I think, is the easiest thing to do. If somebody, if you ask for money for the services that you're going to provide them and they balk, they, they say, oh, well, oh, well, wait a minute. You know, we have to, we got to wait on that. We got to make a bunch of calls. We, we got to call our bank. We got to do something. And they never pay you. That's where you just walk away. That's when you know those people never had money to begin with. You saved yourself a bunch of heartache. But if those people sign you, you know, they send you your money, you probably won't get a check, or maybe you do sometimes for overseas stuff. But if they if they do that uh, right away, they send you some kind of PayPal deal, or you know, you get paid by Venmo or whatever transfer wise, whatever kind of payment system for overseas stuff. Um, if you know your check clears and you got the money, then you know this is probably somebody trustworthy. You still want to make sure there's a couple checks and balances in there, and you build that relationship of trust up. But that's one way you know these people are serious, that they're willing to put money on the table for your services. Your reputation is also on the line. Keep that in mind. You don't want to screw anybody else because others will hear about it. This industry is very small. Be honest and be cool. That's what you want to be doing. <laughs> okay? All right. Um, I did want to mention something else about that that came to mind, which was, oh, yes, we're dealing with foreign people. One thing I would recommend as well is, is negotiating the contracts in dollars in the currency that you live in. So if you're in Europe, you might want to negotiate in euros. If you're, um, I don't know, in, in uh, Canada, you might want to negotiate in Canadian dollars just because it's easier on the conversion rates for yourself. In the United States, if you live here, you want to negotiate any foreign uh, contracts in, in dollars. The only exception to that would be if the foreign currency is actually better, has a better rate than, your, uh, than the currency in which you live and you have easy access to it. So if you have to do all kinds of exchange fees to actually get your money, then the fees will kind of outweigh the, any benefits of, of having that foreign currency. So just make sure you're, um, you know, you're doing the right thing <laughs> when it comes to getting paid. All right, friends, I think that's a really good way to, to end this. And uh, some, some bunch of tips there. That's all networking. It's all dealing with, with business stuff. Some of the things that are important to cover. So we'll be talking more about that in the future. If you have any other questions about that, let us know. We're here to help. All right, guys. This is a good one. We'll talk soon. I look forward to seeing what you guys are doing. Okay, see ya. Bye-bye.